G'day guys and girls, welcome back to the channel. In this one, we're going to be installing the Dark Ice Designs V2 Bonnet Strut Kit. Before we take a quick look at the kit, just what's involved, we're going to be removing this pole here that holds the bonnet up. We're also going to be able to get from this a little bit extra height, so a little bit extra clearance under the bonnet. We need to remove the headlights. We're going to utilize, we're going to build the clamp that goes into that hole just down there. And then along that seam there is where the base of the gas struts sit. And then they go up into this hole up here. Now, on the other side, we just need to take out the clip, the clip for the windscreen washer hose that'll stay in the same place it just gets cable tied in place there but that's where the top of the new gas strut will be and it'll be the same on the other side we'll use the same hole and clamp to the seam which will all be obvious when we get the headlights out here's what the kit looks like out of the pack i got these from rs shop down in aubrey these were basically the only decent branded gas bonnet struts in stock in Australia. So I've got them for about 125 delivered. And we've got our two main brackets, eight washers and another washer that I'm not sure. I haven't read the instructions yet. Two locking nuts. We've got our little ball ends that fit either end of the gas struts some bolts some little bracket pieces that these will all be showing how to how to use them and our instructions and a couple of dark ice design stickers first step I'm going to remove both headlights T30 Torx bit T30 Torx bit Phillips head screwdriver now sometimes these are a bit funky and you need to get a flathead screwdriver just to get under it just to pull that clip out and just down in here your electrical clip for the headlights and then they just should pull out with your front end now looking like this we can get a better look at where we're going to be putting this bottom clamp so it sits over this seam here and down into here Step one is to screw these on if they're not already on. Um, you're going to want them facing the same way because when it's all fitted up, it's going to be that sort of orientation. Next step is to gr grab your brackets. You do them both at the same time. Flip it over. Peel the backing off this. This is a sulfur D adhesive rubber washer and you're going to stick that on there now thread that bolt through there all these bolts are the same you'll you'll know which bolts to use and then you've got this little clip here which actually you might not be able to see but it has a thread inside it and when you're done it'll look like that. So bolt through, self adhesive rubber washer, and just screw this very, very loosely. And I'll show you just quickly on the car what this is going to do. So essentially, this second slightly lower hole down here, that, if you rotate that round, that is going to fit inside there and sit flush and then another bracket will sit up here and clamp it I'll show you exactly what I mean so you can move this out of the way but as you begin to be able to see it's going to be hard to get back on um, you want to make sure you can try and get that down in there so that that is going to fit up here like this and then there'll be another bracket 
that will go on the back there and secure that in place. And that's the next step. All right, so now we're gonna just attach the sandwich plate. I haven't tightened this bottom one up, it's nice and loose. Um, these are a bit tricky when it comes to lining them up and start the thread going. But once it goes, it's all right. There you go, that's already started. So now I'll just get the other one done and then we'll be able to tighten them all up. Starting with the bottom one first. You tighten that one up first and then the two top ones. So this is a 10 mil spanner. I'm lucky enough to have a ratchet spanner, which makes it nice and easy. So you do the bottom one first, just gently at first. And you make sure that's going to be nice and tight. Okay, so this might be easy. You can use a deep 10 mil, or you can use a ratchet spanner and another 10 mil spanner. I've got the nut on this side and the ball on this side. And I've got a washer in here. So you just hold it on the back, or whichever way, and tighten that up nice and tight. So now we're up to actually fit in the gas strut. These ball ends come with this locking pin. You can see how it just comes through just a tiny bit here. That's actually what locks it in place on here. To get them off, it's just like a spring. You just pull that around and then that'll slide out. So I've done that with that end. And I'm just gonna do it with this end. Now to fit the gas strut, you want the cylinder part up here with the piston at the bottom. That just clicks onto there like that. Now with this one, what I might have to do is move that out of the way. I've got my wife holding the bonnet up. Come down a little bit with the bonnet. And then we just click that on. So now that's all securely in place. And then you get your little locking part. You'll see the two holes, they slot in, and then around like that. Same on the bottom, it's around that side. This side's just a little bit fiddly. If I bring the light around, you've got these two hoses here that are clipped in. I unclipped them both, up there and down there just so that I could get a bit better access um, for that bottom one. Now I've seen people say that they've undone the fuse box and moved it out of the way, but with a little bit of fiddling, it probably took me a minute of fiddling, um, I did manage to get that in without removing the fuse box, so that was pretty good. So now we're just going to remove this clip that holds the hose for the windscreen washers. If you have a close look, it's just a circular plug with two little prongs that spring out. If you just get a bit of a grip on them with some pliers, you should be able to squeeze them and pull that through. And what we'll do is we'll just be able to cable tie that up to here or through here or something. I'll show you what it's like when it's done. I've ended up taking this hose locator off because it was just getting in the way of the nut and the bolt. Basically, if you can see there, you just get a flathead screwdriver in there and just pry it open and then the hose comes free. It actually comes with a little self-adhesive strip that I'll probably put a bit further down here and secure it that way with the supplied cable tie. All right, here's our little self adhesive strip. You can feed your cable tie through that. I'm just gonna stick it just behind here, which is pretty much where it was located anyway. I'm just gonna put it probably a bit far enough away that I can get a span the spanner in there and then cable tie that so it's not flapping around like it's not gonna get caught. There you go, that's all nice and neat. So that's job done now. 
that's held out of the way basically in the same position it was anyway and these are now holding up my bonnet and the angle's pretty good too so you do get a bit more a bit more room especially if you were working like in this section right here you've got a bit more angle um, we'll move on to removing this Right, we're going to move. We're going to remove the pole now because we don't need it. Some people put it there, keep it there just in case. These seem pretty, pretty sturdy. Once they get to about there, they'll sort of take over. So this just pulls out like so, and then you can get to this. We'll have a look around the back how that's going to come out. Yeah. I'll work it out. It's going to come out. And I'll get it out. Brought it out of the garage to have a look. You can see the shape of the bracket makes sense now because the seam that it's sitting on is here. It has to come out beyond the headlight. You've got the little retaining clips on both ends. Pretty cool. And over here. We've got the hose in place. I'll just tidy up the adhesive that's moved. And you can also see how much angle you get. So quite a lot of room now to work in the engine bay, especially if you need to take off the cowl and you're working at the back. Um, that, that's just on less of an angle up here. Working on turbos and downpipes and crossovers and whatnot. So yeah, all in all, hopefully these last. I'd like these to last quite a few years. And um, job was pretty easy. Anyone could DIY that. There you go. Thanks for watching. That's the Dark Ice Design V2 Bonnet Strut Kit installed. All in all, pretty simple install. Some bits were a little bit fiddly. But if you've got basic tools and you haven't lost your 10 mils, you could probably do this. Get a T30 Torx so you can get the headlights out. But all in all, pretty simple install, pretty effective. Um, I do like the little bit of extra range that you get with these. And um, it was awesome that RS shop down in um, Albury had these in stock as well. So all in all, it took about a week to get here, but it was cheaper than buying from the UK. Like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching and stick around. Make sure you leave some comments down below and get ready for the next one. Guess who's got some leftover washers? Have you actually DIY'd it yourself if you don't have leftover bits?